RMJ movie reviews back again. And uh, this is my next uh, crime thriller movie reviews. Um, well, this time I decided to review a film that's a little bit more obscure that I'm pretty sure a lot of you out there have never heard of. Uh, digressing, like I always do, for the millionth, fifty, hundredth, thousandth time. I'm a child of the 80s, so, um, of course, my parents were nice enough to have cable during the 80s and throughout the 90s, so I watched a lot of the uh, straight-to-cable early 90s action pictures, you know, those of us remember that had Roddy Piper, Billy Blanks, Donna Dragon Wilson, Lorenzo Lamas, um, uh, couple of other guys who were doing, the, you know, and of course the Skin and Max movies and all that whole thing. Um, the King of Kickboxers. That was one uh, Billy Blanks did just off the top of my head. So anyway, long story short, I decided to review a film directed by Mark L. Lister, who directed Commando. Um, a couple other action films. Oh yeah, of course, Showdown in Little Tokyo. It's a film entitled Extreme Justice, starring... Young Guns himself, Lou Diamond Phillips, and Mr. Silence of the Lambs himself, Scott Glenn. Um, this is a film that, um, and interestingly enough, guys, I'm sorry, I have really bad allergies, so I'm going to be kind of snorting and sniffing throughout this entire review. But anyway, this film, Extreme Justice, I came upon this film... Uh, during the early, the early 90s, up until I believe it was the mid 90s, HBO used to have this thing that was called, I believe it was Thursday Night Action. It was either Thursday Night or Saturday Night Action, or they aired it twice, I can't remember. But those of you who might still have your old VHS tapes from HBO back in there, you might have some bumpers. And you, it actually might even be some on YouTube where it'd be like, and then you get the guy who'd be like, and Thursday night action with Lance Henriksen nights on Thursday night action on HBO. Dun, 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 dun. Matter of fact, I think I remember Brandon Lee had hosted one around the time Rapid Fire had come out in 1992. But this film was released straight to HBO on 19, in 1993. And uh, it was part of their action lineup. And I remember when HBO had the trailer for it, they really made this look like uh, like a straight-ahead action, you know, straight-to-DVD uh, action movie. So, I'm sorry, straight-to-video at the time. Straight-to-VHS video store action movie. And uh, this was around the time when Lou Diamond Phillips' career was... I think it had already pretty much floundered at this point. So this was kind of the beginning of Lou Diamond Phillips' uh post Young Guns, you know, kind of entering the straight-to-video, straight-to-cable world. he do tons of other straight-to-video stuff after this. Scott Glenn was kind of still a character actor, but he was kind of bouncing back and forth between kind of theatrical and straight-to-video, straight-to-cable stuff. But um, when you actually see the film... Uh, this is really more of a, uh, this is, this is a film that I think has an identity crisis. Uh, overall, what do I think of the film? When I very first watched it all the way through, when I, I believe I was 11 years old, um, I kind of just had mixed feelings because I thought it was going to be an action picture. When you come across it, it kind of is kind of a, um, a, a police detective, uh, who's kind of having a moral issue. Because the whole tale that Extreme Justice tells is that Scott Glenn is part of this unit. And this unit has now been exploited in all the movies. Dark Blue, Training Day, I think they did in Street Nights. SIS, Special Investigations. Uh, I don't know. Special Investigations, I don't know. Sector or whatever. I don't know what the last part means. But we've seen it exploited in a bunch of crime drama movies. But anyway, this was kind of the first movie that I can remember that really exploited it before Training Day and those other movies had started to do it. But basically, Scott Glenn is part of the SIS. And um, it's kind of funny. When this movie starts, they give you kind of the Texas Chainsaw mascara crawl that says, this is based on a real unit, but the characters are all fictitious. Oh, and when you see this movie, oh, you'll know for damn sure it's fictitious. Because this movie 
uh, takes real situations, real horrors, and um, exploits them to like... When I say the movies... Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Scott Glenn is part of the SIS. And basically, he's got the whole old school crew. He's got Yafi Kota, Andrew Dioff from Another 48 Hours and Low Down Dirty Shame. Uh, there's another actor who leaves the unit pretty early because he has a nervous breakdown. I don't know that actor's name, but he's very intense, very good. And then there's the other guy. I cannot remember this actor's name, but he was the guy who hired The Rock in the rundown. Very intense, creepy actor. I mean, you got the whole... These are the just machoist, machoist dudes in the world. And Scott Glenn, I think, is very underrated as an actor. He, he does really good work in this movie, in my opinion. But anyway, the whole thing is they're supposed to go after the worst of the worst violent offenders. You know, whether they just be uh, uh, bank robbers, rapists. Uh, that's just really just the two they go after are robbers and rapists, you know, uh, typical, uh, uh, crazy Death Wish-esque universe movie villains. And, uh, basically the thing is, is the whole title of Extreme Justice comes from the fact that yes, they go after the worst of the worst. They go after these really violent, horrible people. But the kick is, is that these guys... Uh, let the offenders commit the crimes. So therefore, they have a reason to use deadly force. So like you always see in these movies, oh, we we, we, we couldn't do it. There, were, there wasn't a real, oh, we, we couldn't shoot the guy because he didn't hurt anybody. Blah, blah, blah. These guys in the SIS and Extreme Justice movie, they cut all that out. So believe me, if uh, you're a hostage and SIS is outside in this movie, um, you're pretty much going to be dead because they're going to let the criminal blow you away and then they could have a reason to come in and kill the criminals. So basically, as Lou Diamond Phillips says, his self in the movie is they're a death squad. They go around uh, often bad guys. And, it, and it's a very, very unique idea, especially for around this time in the early 90s. It's a very unique idea for a movie. I think obviously where the movie suffers is that it's directed by Mark L. Lister. Not that there's anything wrong with him as a director. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is that it's the movie has an identity crisis. It's dealing with this very serious subject matter and vigilanteism within law enforcement, which I think is an intriguing concept for a movie. But it had the movie has these really good action sequences, and the action sequences in this movie are, are just great. They're very well done, but it's like they're done in that very super duper hyper realistic 80s and early 90s style action it's even cut like action films were cut back then which is with the triple cuts within the action which there's nothing wrong with that that's great but the thing that i kind of have is that when those great early 90s action moments happen that only mark l lister can direct it kind of takes me out of the drama aspect of the movie because Scott Glenn is very creepy in this movie. He really rides that, at least I'd say in the first and second act of the movie, he really rides that line of, you know, he's really doing this for the greater good. Of course, as the movie goes along, it kind of gets to the point where he totally goes off the rails and you're just like, okay, this is just a full-on sociopath. This, this is beyond just taking criminals down. He's fulfilling some sick need, almost like a serial murderer would. You know what I mean? Like some sort of sick addiction where you have to kill. It, it gets to that point in the movie. Lou Diamond Phillips is like, hey, wait a minute, I don't want no part of this. And it's, it's a very interesting uh, dilemma that Lou Diamond Phillips' character, and I will say, watching the movie now as an adult versus when I saw the kid, the, the movie when I was a kid, um, I found that part of the movie more interesting than the action beats. And I do love the action beats. Um, another issue with the movie is it ends kind of anticlimactic, anticlimactically. It, it would have been nice if the movie would have been, it would have had a more of a bang for the ending. It kind of ends kind of, not the best, but uh, but that concept to me of vigilanteism within law enforcement with this special unit, I really like. And also there's very early 90s cartoony stuff, kind of like with Yafit Kodo, 
wearing a cowboy get up and he's wearing like bandanas with the kind of the uh, Mexican standoff and he's busting open the door and kind of shooting people like with two guns, which is all cool stuff, but it kind of a little bit feels kind of pre-Expendables-ish. Uh, matter of fact, I think these guys are more badass than the Expendables. <laughs> Uh, anybody who's seen this movie, you can make a comment about that. But I, I think Scott Glenn's crew in this movie are the real Expendables before the Stallone Expendables. I, I think they would kick the Expendables' ass. That's just my opinion. Don't criticize me, guys. <laughs> and um, also, Chelsea Fields is Lou Diamond Phillips' girlfriend in this movie. Which, I will say, she did a girlfriend run. She did Last Boy Scout. She did Harley Davidson, The Marble Man. And I think this is the third movie that she did uh, in a row here. I like here she actually has something to do, unlike those other two movies. And although her character is cliched in the woman sexist role, she's a reporter investigating the SIS. And her role is really uh, uh, unneeded because I kind of feel like Lou Diamond Phillips' character is human enough without her, but it has to add some tension to if the SIS goes after her. They don't ever go anything with that. There's not. Scott Glenn kind of gives a veiled kind of threat. Just visually, as only Scott Glenn can do with those kind of sleepy, old man-looking eyes that he has. But, um, you know, thankless role, but she does the most she does with it. And, you know, she, she, she has a lot more to play with here than she did with Last Boy Scout, and especially Harley Davidson, The Marlboro Man, which her role in that movie was essentially like that. But, um, and you know, like I said... The, the crew, Scott Glenn's crew in this movie, you just got an all-star cast. Andrew Dioff, who is the bad guy of bad guy roles. He's the great character actor. He has a very small part, but he he kind of feels like he could be Lou Diamond Phillips' character. Like, you can kind of see there's scenes where he knows what he's doing is wrong, but this guy is just like, he, he's in it for his team. So, um, Yafit Koto was kind of just like, again... He's with his team. But he kind of seems like he's just kind of ignoring the fact. He may seem like he knows he's wrong, but he's just rolling with it. He's doing his job. Uh, the guy from the rundown, uh, he's a scary, scary guy. I, there's one scene I like in particular where Ed Lauder, the character actor who passed away. Excuse me, guys. This is girl. Ed Lauder, the character actor who passed away. Death Wish 3, uh tons of other movies who's always played the police captain role he's a police captain here i like when there's a scene where they're talking about taking down these three rapists and then you know they're kind of like oh god we made a mistake and then the guy from the rundown goes yeah we left him breathing and lou and there's this really cool uh foreground background shot where the guy from the rundown is here lou diamond phillips is here and lou diamond phillips kind of looks at him and he gives him this look and he kind of just goes this real creepy look and i love that short moment there should have been more of that in the movie, but I love that moment. Um, but I think it, it just has an identity crisis. You know, it wants to be this morale police drama, but it also wants to be an early 90s, like, shoot 'em up flick. And I do love that the action here is brutal. It is the first bank robbery, bloody. It, it really emphasizes, and although it's it's... You know, early 90s cuts where, like, you can tell the actor is standing there waiting for the script and they go, ah, you know, it's, it's cool. You know, you don't notice it until, you know, you watch this stuff now. But it's this, that shootout is appropriately bloody. There's innocent civilians who get gunned down. There's a, one of the cops shotgun blasts a pregnant woman. It, it It's pretty hardcore stuff. And I appreciate that because it's so bloody and it's so violent. It kind of, it really bombard you and makes you feel a little bit sleazy and I think that adds to the icky factor and this movie does have an icky factor where the movie kind of took me out of it a little bit is there's there's a rape sequence in the film with three rapists and I I felt that although I can tell the way it's cut that there was probably more that they took out maybe not as bad as Death Wish 2 but th th you could tell they took some stuff out but England guys, I have no problem against sleaze. Look, I like Toby Hooper's The Fun House. I like Alexander Ages' uh, Hills Have Lies remake. I, I have no problem with depicting rape in films. Um, they are films. Um, I like The Last House on the Left remake a lot. I think that's a really good movie. Um, 
just for me here, it, it's just it's just very very nasty, and the actress really it, it just for me that little short rape sequence really took me out of the movie, and I felt it was unnecessary. And it really just made me feel nauseous because not only do you see the chick get raped, then, you know, Scott Glenn shoots the bad guy and then she gets shot in the back. So it, it's very... That sequence, maybe that was a, the object of it, was to make you feel very nauseated and icky, but it worked for me. Um, that was the one sequence that I, the movie kind of turned for me and it was just kind of so hardcore. It, I even back then and I do now have trouble kind of coming back after that. But um I, I really think that was maybe one piece of the movie that you could have did without. And then it goes that rape scene to early nineties action picture and it kind of you know, it's kinda of torn. So I don't know. Uh, I think it's an okay film, and I actually, like I said, I enjoyed it a lot more now than I did uh, then when I first saw it, because I now I know what it is, but again, it has an identity crisis. Um, you know, and also, I forgot to leave out, the music is done by, I think his name is David Michael Frank, who did uh, some music, I think, I think he did some music for some of the early Seagal movies, and he did Best of the Best 2, he did a lot of those action films back then, but he did the music here, and the, the score here is really good. And one thing that I also like, too, is I, I love the fact that they leave in uh, kind of little quirks of of law enforcement officers, the drinking. You know, although it's a typical cheesy smoke field bar and all that kind of stuff. But I, I really like that, you know, a lot of officers, uh, and I've heard this directly from real cops, that a lot of cops are alcoholics. So I like that little touch they have in the movie. So overall, it's an okay movie. You got a really creepy Scott Glenn, uh, who who plays it layered, I think, um, until the, the third act. Lou Diamond Phillips, uh, who I always thought was a good actor. Obviously, his best work was La Bamba and Young Guns 1 and 2. Great roles. Um, he's good here. Chelsea Fields is good here. Actually, I think all the actors are good in this movie. Um, it, like I said, this movie just has an identity crisis. You know what I mean? And just that rape scene kind of... Ugh didn't really care for it. I think they could have took that out. So that's my review of the very obscure 1993 Mark L. Lester film Extreme Justice starring Lou Diamond Phillips and Scott Glenn. Thumbs up the video, subscribe to the channel, share the video, hit that little bell down below so you can know when I'm coming up with new videos and leave comments down below about Extreme Justice for those of you who uh, saw it at the time when it came to video or those who must have I don't know who that would be who actually found the movie recently and found it. Because I don't even know if you could find this thing anymore. The only reason I was even able to review this movie, I, I know for dang on sure you can't stream it, is because of this bad boy right here. So that's my review of Extreme Justice RMJ Movie Reviews. I'll see you guys soon.